this is Norman Mellish speaking. Very happy to be able to bring a little word from the Gospel of, uh, of John to you and to speak regarding the lovely person of our Lord Jesus Christ. We trust that there might be something that would be a blessing uh, to us all today and lead them into faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. The verse that I have in mind is a lovely verse in the Gospel of John in chapter 1. John loved to reach out to sinners and John loved to tell of the way of God's salvation. And in verse 12 he turns around and says, but as many as received him, that's the Lord Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The next verse is beautifully linked with it and perhaps we might quote that ere we have finished this evening. We do trust that God will bless that word to you. Now, the reason I quoted this verse is because it's set against the background of a rejected man. The Lord Jesus in John's Gospel is set forth as a rejected man. And uh, not only a rejected man, but as God who was manifest in flesh. And sadly, we discover that there are those that uh, turn their back upon the person of the Lord Jesus and refuse to accept him. John begins with a lovely expression right at the very beginning, which uh, brings before us the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. It simply turns around to say, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, you know, of course, a word is the expression of a mind. And the Lord Jesus is the full expression of the mind of God toward you and toward me. And all that he wants for you and all that he wants for me. And what God wants for you is that you should come into the good of the great salvation that he offers to sinners. And it's a wonder uh, of what God does desire on your behalf and my behalf. But the sad thing, when John speaks of the person of the Lord Jesus, he turns around and tells us uh, in verse uh, 3 how that the Lord Jesus is the light of the world. And he tells us the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. You know, the Son of God, he was unseen as he moved in this world. And very sadly, we discover that there were those uh, that uh, could not appreciate the wonders and the glory that was associated with his person. It didn't matter what miracles he wrought. Evidently, miracles that no man could ever understand and no man could fathom. We remember how that one of those Pharisees came to the Lord Jesus and he had to confess, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And in spite of the fact that they knew about who, uh, the Lord Jesus had come from. Nevertheless, they could not grasp uh, the person of the Son of God. And verse 3 tells us that the Lord Jesus is the unseen Christ. He came and he shone in a world of darkness, a world that doesn't value or appreciate what lies before it. And the Lord Jesus came to bring that light, but sadly we discover that men could not walk in the good of that light. And verse 5 tells us that the Lord Jesus was unseen. But you know, a little further down in verse 10, it turned around to tell us that he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. And what a sad thing when the Lord Jesus came here and the world knew him not. They asked the question on time, sir, uh, uh, regarding the person of the Lord Jesus as they wanted to discern something as to the distinction between him and other men. But the Lord Jesus was not only unseen, but he was absolutely unknown. And you know, that has been so for the last 2,000 years or more. In spite of the fact that the Christ of God has been preached, in, Christ, in, fact, in spite of the fact that the transformation of the lives of sinners is very clear before men. 
nevertheless still they cannot see the beauties and glories that shine in God's beloved Son. And I would tonight that there might be somebody that would realise that when the Lord Jesus came, he came to be a saviour of sinners, and he came that we might have eternal life. But here we find that the Lord Jesus was in the world. The world knew him not. But the saddest thing is when we come to the next verse, verse 11, which turns around and tells us that the Lord Jesus is not only unseen and unknown, but in verse 11, sadly, the Lord Jesus was unwanted. And in verse 11, it turns around and says, he came unto his own. You know, in actual fact, the thought there is he came unto his own things. The Lord Jesus is the creator of the universe. He came into the world. And it's quite clear that the world, it, it, it neither saw him, nor knew him, nor did it know him. And the Bible turns around and says, he came unto his own things. And the sad thing is that the Lord Jesus, as a Jew, he came to his own temple. He came to his own throne. He came to his own land. But the nation of Israel didn't want him. When he was in the temple, they took up stones to stone him and cast him out. When he, uh, when he was about to die at Calvary's tree, I hear again the uh, pilot turning round and say, Shall I crucify your king? They turned round and said, We have no king but Caesar. And they wouldn't really accept the Lord Jesus, and they wouldn't accept him that came uh, to his own throne. And when it came to his old land, they cast him out and they buried him in a tomb there at Golgotha. Thank God he's not in that tomb anymore. Thank God the Lord Jesus has been raised from the dead. You know, it's as if God said, if you don't want him, I'll have him. And God has taken the Lord Jesus back to the right hand of the majesty in the heavens. And it's a living Christ we bring before you today. But it's the same Jesus. I, I love an expression that says, this same Jesus shall so come. And the Lord Jesus that went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, is this same Jesus that's still on the throne tonight. And this same Jesus that fed the multitudes and healed the sick and did what he could to, to recover the sight of the blind, to raise the dead and to uh, and to cure the lepers. The Lord Jesus wants to bring blessing to humanity, but the greatest blessing is that of salvation. And the greatest blessing is that of knowing your sins forgiven and that you've got peace with God and that you're eternally saved. That's the greatest blessing. And there is a lovely statement as we go in from verse 11. If he is the unseen Christ, if he's the unknown Christ, again in verse 11, it turns around and says he came unto his own and his own. And the word there is his own people. They received him not. And they wouldn't have the Lord Jesus Christ. And you remember the cries that went up from the cross. And those cries that simply said, away with him. We'll not have this to reign over us. They wouldn't even link him with humanity. They wouldn't even say, we'll not have this man. We'll not have this. And it was a term of disrespect and absolute rejection of God's beloved Son. Now I'm asking tonight, will you have him? Will you make him your Lord? Will you make him your Saviour? Will you bow to his claims? Will you take a Bible in your hand, my dear friend? Will you read about this blessed man? And will you see the mighty things that he did? And that is the desires of his heart? to win you to himself, that you might be eternally saved for the whole of eternity. Well, let me go on, please, with the very next verse, the verse that we have quoted as the main theme uh, uh, of our ministry this evening. If he came unto his own and his own received him not, verse 12 simply says, but as many as received him. I tell you, I love this verse, and I love to think 
that the opportunity is going out to all and every man and every woman, whoever's prepared to turn to the Son of God, that they might be saved and they might be brought into the blessing of eternal life. And verse 12 says, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power. Again, it's a lovely word. It literally means the right, the authority. And what right does God give to you? What authority does God give to me? The authority is this, that if you're prepared to reverse the world's verdict, and particularly the verdict of that nation that would not receive the person of the Lord Jesus to themselves, if you're prepared to reverse that verdict, then God says, I'm going to give you authority to become one of my sons. To them gave him the authority to become the sons of God. What a blessed thing. I never forget the day of my conversion. I've often told folks I was brought up in a very ungodly home. I was brought up atheistically. I know I was only saved when I was nearly 16 years of age, and I'm very, very thankful for that, as God stopped me in my tracks on one occasion, causing me to realize that there might be a God, and if there was a God, there was a heaven, and if there was a God, there was a hell, and if there was a God, I was going to hell. It shoot me to the roots, you know, and it caused me to realize that I needed to go and listen to the gospel of our Lord Jesus. I went and listened to a little, in a little gospel hall in Withenshaw in Manchester. And there I heard about the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, who went to the cross to put away my sin, but rose again to give me eternal life. And I'm very, very thankful that the morning that I got converted, I got on my knees in a little kitchen in a council house in Withenshaw. And I just asked the Lord Jesus to do what he'd, uh, what he'd come into the world to do. I asked him to save a sinner like me. Here I'm very thankful. He's not in the business of rejecting sinners. No, he's in the business of saving sinners. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I took my place as a sinner. And I bowed at the feet of the Lord Jesus and asked him to save a sinner like me. Can I tell you, friend, it didn't take a week. It didn't take a day. It didn't take an hour. Just in moments, as I bowed my knees to the Son of God, thank God, the Lord Jesus took me in. And I knew in that moment that my sins were forgiven. In that moment, I knew I'd got eternal life. And the amazing thing was, as I rose from my knees, and I was only on my knees a couple of minutes, the very first thing that came into my heart was a word from heaven. When God spoke to my soul and simply said, God is your father. Ah, my dear friend, a blessed thing to be amongst the sons of God. That's what salvation is. Salvation is not turning over a new leaf. No, salvation is not trying to be religious. Salvation is not trying to do something better. No, it's trusting Christ. And when you trust Christ, salvation, my dear friend, is coming into the family of God and becoming a son of God. And this lovely verse goes on to tell us, even to them that believe on his name, Will you believe on Christ today? Will you trust the Lord Jesus? Will you make him your saviour? My dear friend, that's what makes a transformation. Don't turn me back upon God's beloved son. Recognise that he came into the world to save a sinner like you. He's at the right hand of God today. He wants to come into your heart. He wants to come into your life. He wants to transform that life. He wants to make you a son of God. Now, this is not natural. That's exactly what the next verse says. It says, who are born. I was born in 1935. I was born again in 1951. And I was born, but this time, it was not of blood. Neither was it of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, 
but it was the will of God. And God saved me that day. And God gave me a new life. And God, God transformed everything that day. And thank God for the keeping power that has kept me to this moment of time. An unseen Christ. An unknown Christ. An unwanted Christ. He's not that to me anymore. I bless God, my dear friend, for the appreciation I have of God's beloved Son and a man that I do long to, to know and to be with. And you can, if you'll but bow the knee and trust him as your Lord and as your Saviour. May the Lord bless you and bless his word. Listen again next week in the will of God uh, to another gospel meeting so that the word of God might penetrate the heart. But my dear friend, don't wait a week. Trust Christ tonight and be saved eternally.